Thanks, Emmett. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to do this, and I also want to thank Bill as well, um, and just congratulate you both on another fabulous OIS. Uh, we love seeing the packed house. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, a kind of a neat session, uh, and you know, this whole meeting really is centered around the future, and I think a lot of us are, are hopeful that this may represent a part of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a brief introduction on the kind of current state of where we're at in terms of post-refractive IOLs, uh, refractive error, and, um, and what are the unmet needs and current approaches. So after this, we're gonna be, have uh, four different companies present to us who are kind of leading the way in, this, uh, in these emerging technologies, and then we're gonna have a robust panel discussion about kind of the future of all this and, and, and where are we heading. So what I want to do is I'm just going to kind of dive in, and I, I do um, sit on the medical advisory board for two of the companies that are, we're going to be discussing here. So let's talk about the current state. Um, you know, when we talk about refractive cataract surgery, patients are being asked to make a lifetime decision with concepts that are difficult to understand really in a matter of minutes. And, I, and this is really an, an art and something that I think uh, we, don't, we tend to not appreciate enough, just how much pressure is put on our clients. And in fact, surgeons may spend more time counseling our clients than an actual surgery. I mean, these procedures may take seven minutes, but we may spend 15 counseling them because we're not just quite sure how they're going to do afterwards. And our current goal is about plus or minus a half diopter of our intended target with, with cataract surgery. That's what we're hoping to achieve. But with this emerging concept of refractive cataract surgery and pushing more and more towards LASIK type outcomes, we're talking about a quarter diopter intended target with LASIK, right? A half a diopter would not be acceptable. But is it, is it realistic? Because of this term we tend to throw around a lot that may not be very well understood, which is the effective lens position and just how elusive predicting ELP really is. So, ladies and gentlemen, 27 million IOLs were placed last year globally. 27 million, okay? That's a, that's a lot of opportunity. Uh, yet, when um, David Chang did a, a, a really thoughtful meta-analysis about eight years ago about how are we doing with our intended targets, so really just over a flip of a coin of whether or not we could achieve that half a diopter of intended target. 57% of surgeons could based on the best peer-reviewed literature published at that time. 57% of patients. Well, we've seen a lot of emerging technology since then, artificial intelligence for and, and, and fourth generation IOL formulae, um, femtosecond lasers, uh, and uh, intraoperative aberrometry. So how are we doing, um, fast forward six, seven years, 2017, it was still a flip of a coin. 55% of patients uh, with some of the best peer reviewed literature were within a half diopter of intended target. This was 150,000 eyes uh, out of Europe in the European Society of Cataract Refractive Surgery Refractive Outcome Analysis. And again, about 55% of, uh, of surgeons were within a half a diopter of intended target. So, wow. So we, we think we're doing well, but how are, well are we really doing? Well, what about astigmatism? You know, a, a, a third of eyes would be candidates for astigmatic correction at the time of cataract surgery, yet only 4% of eyes globally receive a toric IOL. And that's amazing to me, right? There, another massive opportunity. And how many of you would believe that still the leading mechanism for treating presbyopia at the time of cataract surgery is monovision? Globally, 17% of patients get monovision. And for those of us that do this, we know the stakes are really high. We have to hit within a half a diopter. So when we put all this together, we now all of a sudden, when we think about unmet need, that's about 45% are not within a half a diopter potentially, at least based on the peer-reviewed literature that we have. So now we have to address it. Well, 
now we have to decide which lens are we going to address it with. Is this the cornea or the internal lens? Well, typically, the cornea has been the way that we do this with laser refractive enhancements. And that is if somebody's looking for a surgical solution. Often, we may go with a non-surgical solution with spectacle correction or contact lenses. But from a surgical perspective, we have eczema ablations, femtosecond lasers with smile. And there still may be a role for conductive keratoplasty. But what about lens-based? We might use a piggyback IOL or an IOL exchange. But now, we're going to hear about the light adjustable technology here from Dr. Slade here shortly. And I think uh, John Marshall really summed this up the best when he said, uh, postulated, why, why, why should the cornea suffer from crimes of the lens? And I just really love that, that quote because it really is at the heart of all this.